Well, I'm trying to get this mini split up here today and I have, this is my streaming area. Rough looking that it is. I'm gonna put a wall plate up here. Let me back it up a little bit. Or just get this wall sheathed, at least in this area. The line set will probably go out through here, depending on what side it comes out. It looks like it comes out on the this side here. So maybe the opposite side. So the line set will go out here, here, whichever side we choose. Go down the back of the building to the heat pump outside. But I have to get some stud guards in the wall where some of this wiring goes through here. I have a few more to put on down here, and then I can get to work putting the sheathing up probably put the hole through there, kind of plot out where it is, then put the sheathing up, that way I can drill it back from the outside and we can get moving and setting this thing and hopefully getting some conditioning in here. If not today, then over the weekend. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this bracket for the wall mount air conditioner, put it up a few inches lower than the ceiling, kind of plot out where the hole's gonna be for the line set heading out of the building and kind of maybe I'll just screw this thing up just kind of temporarily, level it up, get the hole plotted out, take it down, cut the hole outside, and then whenever I put up the sheathing inside that it's gonna to mount to, I can then drill back inside so I can line up those holes and have it kind of decreasing as it heads out so the drain drains more easily. I put up the wall plate temporarily on the wall. I've marked out where the bottom of the hole is gonna be, which is basically in line with the bottom of this wall plate. On the inside, it'll be a little bit higher so that drain can drain downward. I'm gonna drill that out with a hole saw in just a minute and what I did was measure to the center of the mini split and then measure over to where the lines go through the wall. And this drain will actually go through right here as well. That's how I plotted out the hole. And as you can see as well, there's a little bit of a gap here, even with the, the drain coming out underneath between the bottom of the mini split and the line set. So there's a little bit of a gap there we can work with. So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna drill that hole out the back of the building with the hole saw and then I could put up the sheathing in here and drill the hole in here and mount the mini split head permanently to the wall. I have the mini split sitting up on a box here. The lines are straightened out going out the back of it. I'm gonna attach this cable to it, the power cable and communication cable. They're pre-made ends on this wire. One of them has this type of Stacon. One of them has this little blade type Stacon. And I'm going to feed it from the back of the unit inside in advance before I put it on the wall because it'll be a lot easier just to throw this out the wall and put it up instead of trying to feed it through the wall once it's in place. Now that I have the line sticking out, I have the wire sticking out here, I'm gonna run them straight down the wall here and encase them in a little wooden box, build a stand for the condenser you see right behind me, or heat pump, and I'm gonna go ahead, I got some truded boards right here. I'm gonna put together a stand, sink it into the ground a little bit, and then we're gonna try to finish this thing up today, so keep your fingers crossed. Talking about North Carolina clay. As you guys can see, the condenser is sitting in place on the stand. The stand's been leveled up, but we're going to check that a few more times as time goes by because it might settle. We have the line set run all the way up here, coiled up so I can cut it off and braze it up top. And down below, we are gonna use those flares because I just wanna use those flares. We're gonna see how good they are first, just in case. A lot of guys say don't use the line set flares. I am a lot of guys who might say that, but you know what? We're gonna give it a shot here. We're gonna see how the line set flares work and allow me to suffer the repercussions of that. I have to wire up the high voltage a little bit later, run that communicating cable down, that high voltage cable, run the drain down, 
looking good so far we're making good progress might actually get this thing fired up by the end of the day so we have our two flares here and i'm gonna say i'm gonna say you guys with confidence here these are all-star flares okay these are the best flares i've ever seen in my whole stinking life i don't want to hear anything from you guys about it not being so so we're going to put these flares onto these two connections actually we're going to put this one on loosely and not torque it down yet because i'm going to flow nitrogen through and let it escape from this one when i'm brazing but on this one we can go ahead and torque it down to the specs so uh what are those hey let's find out what size pipe is this this looks like half inch I believe this is a half inch line right here. So let's see what we're gonna do. Where is our, all right, we have half inch, 3,500, which we'll, let's translate that to America. 25.8 foot pounds of torque. Add tightening torque, 36, 26.55. Do not use excessive torque. Excessive force can break the nut or damage the refrigerant pipe and you must not exceed torque requirements shown in the table above. Well, I won't. I'm gonna use this Nylog Blue gasket and thread sealant from Refrigeration Technology. Put a little bit on the face of the flare right here, the face of the flare connection, and then a little bit on the back side of the flare as well. So when it seats, it hits and spreads apart right there. Same thing here, it'll spread apart and coat that surface and just give us that added protection that uh, we've come to love from Nylog. So I hand tighten that on there and I have the digital torque wrench from Yellow Jacket here, which is the 60648. And I'll use this to make sure we hit our torque specs and don't go over or under and give this thing the best chance of not leaking it can possibly have with these flares. We're going to go ahead and set it up for 25.8 foot-pounds. So it'll start signaling whenever we get close and we'll know not to over-tighten it. And there we are right there. It's hard to do that while trying to look and hold the camera and everything like that, but we got to just over 25. I know we're right there at our torque specs for this one. The unit started to shift a little bit. I should have screwed it down. That would have helped, but uh, hindsight's 2020, guys, and I am the master of not having good foresight. Great hindsight, though. So what I did is I brazed up the unit using my oxygen acetylene torch, which is in, in bad need of an upgrade here, guys, but it's not used very often. Set a little bit of a low flow here all the way into the vapor line. As you see here, we stepped down from 5 16 to 1 quarter inch, just like most mini splits. So you have to have that fitting, which I'm glad I did. I protected the building with some sheet metal, brazed both the connections up there. It was flowing back down through the saturated vapor line and coming out through this flare. We're about to attach this flare, then I can pressure check it, and then we can put it into a vacuum. So we have the same story with this particular line. We're going to tighten it up with the Yellow Jacket Torque Wrench. Let's go back to our specs and see what we need here for this quarter inch line. So we have a half here and a quarter here. Let's see what we got up on the chart. So on a quarter inch, we're going between 11 and 11.8 foot-pounds. So we can set a target of 11 foot-pounds. And when we exceed that just slightly, we should be in that sweet spot. Product placement. Hey. 
I'm sorry. That was that was conspicuous. All right, this is Newton meters. Let's, we don't need any Newton meters. The United States of America, right here. All right, 11 foot pounds. All right, 11 foot pounds. That way we'll trigger there. We'll go ahead and put it on there, and uh, shouldn't take long to get to 11 foot pounds for a beast like me. <laughs> hey. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. The vacuum's been going for a long, long time here. Let's see. We have, we can tell, 97 microns. Uh, units wired up here, high voltage going into the unit from the panel and then onto the air handler, so that's good. So now we're just kind of winding down, going to release the charge in a minute and see how she runs. After about three minutes, we are still at 109 microns in the decay test, so we are good to go. I'm going to shut down the vacuum pump. We're going to release the refrigerant, and we should be able to fire this thing up. I have to make a little case around this thing afterwards, but uh, I'm not worried about that right now. All right, so we have off and on here. Let's do on. So we're on, we have power here, we should have power inside, there may be a little waiting period. Maybe we'll move some of this stuff off. We'll go inside and check in there, get our remote, see if we can't fire this thing up. That's our wall mount on the wall. Do a little bit of cleaning it up, wiping it off. It looks fantastic. Let's see what happens when we try, let's see. Seventy six. Very nice. We have movement of fins. Good. Let's see what else we have here. I gotta back it up a little bit. We have mode, we have cool, dry, heat. We'll turn the fan on first and see how that works. Yeah. Fan is running. It says it's 69. That doesn't feel right. It feels like it's 100,000 degrees in here. Maybe it's just because I've been outside working. I don't know. Let's do... Cool. And we'll change the temperature down to a balmy 67. We'll see if the outdoor unit comes on. I'll never get over how quiet these things are. So this one is very, very quiet. I was inside getting some garbage bags. It was on when I came back out. Let's take a look at the indoor operation and see what it looks like. Well, I can tell you it's very, very cold. <laughs> so the air conditioner is definitely on. It's functioning and good because it gets hot in here, guys. It's very, very quiet too, which is good for me. It's not in dry mode. I might put it into dry mode when I'm not in here. I'm not sure. I've got to read a little bit more about it, but this is the Cooper Hunter 9000 BTU split heat pump. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist. And if you want to see a new video you might not have ever seen before, check out this one right down here. And if you want to find out more about the sponsors that make this show possible, you click on this box right here. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, please click here to do so.